Uh, when I was little, I think there was a foreshadowing of my current career there in those early days. Because when I looked at a car and I could see it moving, I questioned, well, how can that be? And I concluded by observing the evidence that there was uh, smoke coming out of the, the pipe at the back, the exhaust, and that therefore that must be propelling the car forward. And so in my, what would it have been, five, six-year-old mind, uh, I had concluded that the car is moving because it is uh, propelled by sort of a jet propulsion uh, out of the exhaust, and I better not stand behind the car mm -hmm. because I might get roasted um, or pushed away by the exhaust. Now, that's an interesting theory I had, and I had evidence for it. Um, then later, when I was at, uh, at university, well, it was explained to me that this is a an internal, it was maybe a bit late, but it was <laughs> in life, an internal combustion engine uh, which uh, burns the fuel that's in it, uh, increasing the heat, uh, just simply speaking, um, raising the heat in a cylinder, expanding uh, the air in there, and therefore pushing a, uh, a rod uh, up and down to eventually turn the wheels and there is another theory and of course at university then I was uh, given an engine to take apart uh, and experiment on and I could see that that was actually the correct theory um, so life is full of these things that we can observe and we can form theories on um, but there are many theories that are incorrect and there are far fewer theories which are correct. Now when we find the theory for whatever it is that is correct we can repeat it many times so every time you pull uh, a internal combustion engine apart and put it back together correctly it will work and every single car that you go to and you open the bonnet you'll find one in there Okay, so do you see what I'm trying to say? That, that the correct theories for what we observe uh, in the end are repeatable and, and are actually much easier to explain than the ones which are incorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the simple truth behind the origin of the species. Because the debate has become very, very muddled. <laughs> what we have is, is one side saying that uh, the earth was uh, created by God, an intelligent designer, uh, and another side which says that the earth just came into being. One of those theories is incredibly simple, easy to understand, and when we test it we find that it is correct time and time again with what we observe, uh, and the other one, which I won't be covering, I think you will find less so. So we're going to look at the simple fact of life, as in where did it come from? And we find this, no life has ever come from a non-living source. Secondly, life must always be passed on from another life. And we observe that in the natural world without exception. <laughs> So hopefully you agree, wherever you find little bunnies, there must be big bunnies. And it's as simple as that, isn't it? Wherever we find a living organism, whether it's under the microscope, or whether it's the largest tree, uh, or plant, or animal, there must have been other life which passed on life to it. And we observe this without exception. There aren't any exceptions in the natural world. So our observation leads us to believe that first life on Earth must have emanated from another life, because otherwise all our observations would lead us in a separate direction. So what was that first life giver? And the simple answer is God. 
and that's why those who believe in creation believe in God and that's why those who accept the Christian gospel believe in God uh, and as you can see it's logical with what we see in the natural world so what point did simple logical reasoning leave us because the simple answer God seems to tick all the boxes it seems to be consistent with what we see around about us surely just like I when I was 10 or 15 or 18 when I was at university put away the theories which were incorrect because they didn't tally with what I saw in the world around me surely by now people ought to have put aside the idea of evolution and stuck with this simple uh, and I believe correct answer of God the Creator well of course human nature says well if I believe in God I'd have to answer to him I might have to do what he says and so if we go from a simple answer to a reaction I don't like having to answer to God the only result is that we have to have another answer instead of God and I believe that's what's happened and that's why we are here with evolution we've had 6,000 years of alternative answers to God and unfortunately the situation at the moment is that at an early age we're preached to at school on the television on the internet whatever we read children's books we are preached to about the theory of evolution and I think it's quite nicely summed up here in this cartoon hopefully you all get it so let's explore the simple answer God said let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind <coughs> cattle and creeping thing beast of the earth after his kind and it was so so God passed on life from life because God said and it was done it was created and it says elsewhere in Genesis in the creation of, of Adam that God breathed life into him God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed <coughs> so life in turn passes on life that's what seed is all about and it's always the same kind so the simple fact of life is just to recap no life has ever come from a non-living source and life must always be passed on from another life we observe this in the natural world without exception and we observe it in the scripture without exception right from the first page no life has ever come from a dissimilar source and life must always be passed on from the same species as it said in that passage in Genesis we just read again without exception species is defined as this and so if we observe these uh, rules and we observe the world around us we are not able to see any kind of convergence of the species that is a, 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 a coming together of the features uh, and the attributes of one species and the, uh, the, 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 the eventual sort of domination of, of the species by one uh, species that has all the best attributes in it there's no natural selection of the best design if we are to stick with what we observe and what we read in the Bible there's no divergence of the species 
no half species hybrids or best compromises and in our perception which we will just have a look at in a minute this statement is true and these do not occur now the Bible emphasizes the simple answer over and over from the very first page Genesis 1.25 after his kind after their kind after his kind reproduction is always done after its kind and if we accept this simplicity spoken of in the Bible and accept that God must have started all this off and we come with the different reaction <clears throat> that I'm willing to accept it then I can guarantee that life and the world around us starts making more sense uh, just as, as a, a young boy I would have been very foolish to go to university and try and persuade everyone on my mechanical engineering course that cars propelled themselves uh, by the fumes that came out of the back it would have made my life very difficult so uh, life becomes very difficult when one tries to explain creation uh, or explain the origin of the species in a different way and that's possible why the possibly why the theories of evolution have become so complicated let's look at it some more in school they teach that evolution results in the survival of the fittest so we would have to conclude that there aren't any unnecessary elements of design to be present in the creation we see around us okay if if the survival of the fittest is correct then we shouldn't be able to see unnecessary colour, texture, patterns or shape and size in the creation that we see around us. It should be utilitarian. <coughs> so if we can get this working we're going to have a quick look in a video of the natural world these are taken <coughs> photos taken within a six mile radius uh, of a village in Holland So we spent over a minute and a half looking at uh, what? Sorry? Fungus. fungus. Yeah, wasn't it fun? <laughs> <coughs> uh, 
but so I deliberately chose something that was you know boring it was the lowest of the low uh, and yet these were all separate species I believe uh, there may have been one or two uh, duplicates there all it is is fungus you know, all it is is growing out of dead matter on the forest floor uh, and we had amazing patterns and colour and shapes and different sizes so we did have t unnecessary colour texture, patterns, shape and size uh, and it's all there reflected in Genesis we don't have to scratch around for meaning in what we see in the natural world it's recorded for us God created the world and everything in it in this way the earth brought forth grass the herb yielding seed after its kind the tree yielding fruit who seeds in itself after his kind and God saw it was good so one of the reasons God did it this way is because he wanted it to be good and he wanted us to see and recognize that this was a good creation and he made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food um, and there's an incredible amount of the uh, natural world that exists simply by eating fungus uh, and so God has designed criteria that we know about because of scripture and we can see it reflected in the world all around us every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food and the reason is that we know he is the designer of it he left not himself without witness in that he did good gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness I don't know if you do enjoy the odd woodland walk but seeing the, the, the flowers and little creatures and smelling the fragrances it really is wonderful isn't it so uh, in school we're taught that evolution results in the survival of the fittest therefore we ought to conclude that there should be no unnecessary elements of design present but that's not what we see and that's therefore not what we can conclude and we ought also to conclude the species will tend towards a few best solutions but as you can see where fungus is concerned there wasn't just one type of fungus so that the animals could eat it there were many different kinds <coughs> and there were many uh, so-called superfluous elements there so we're going to look at something else we're going to specifically look at how God solved the problem of plants and trees passing on uh, their life to create further life so if God designed the world what we're going to see is uh, instead of one solution to this problem we're going to see many solutions and we're going to see that all these solutions work in themselves and are not in any way tending towards a one or a few best solutions so this is just to wake you up and uh, have you calling out please if you don't mind who can see here oh, what we're going to do is look at the variety beauty uh, th these are the design criteria that I just listed uh, so we're going to look at the way in which seeds fulfill uh, those criteria so that all can benefit so I'm getting ahead of myself. Right. Who can tell me where the seed are here and how they're spread? In the skin, yeah, of the strawberry. And this is one we sometimes have uh, uh, take a part in. By being eaten, then what happens? Bird poo, yeah, or the poo. <laughs> And so it's covered in, in, in nutritious manure. Isn't that an amazing design uh, solution? That first of all, it smells and looks wonderful and it's tasty so that we 
desire it or birds or animals want to eat it and that's a solution to the problem of how does this plant spread its seed far and wide and when it comes out the other end it's wrapped in this nutritious manure for it to be able to start growing straight away in the best kind of soil yeah close for the seeds um, what about that one? melon this time the seeds are inside so it's got to be um, it's got to be eaten for those seeds to be spread around and I think possibly the difference here is the I don't know what it's called but the, the jelly like substance around here which helps it go through so quickly like that one yeah blown on the wind I think that's a broom tree yeah propelled out well done does anyone know how it happens? These are seed pods. They start off like little green, uh, a bit like runner beans, really, but about this big. Just twist a bit as they dry out, and then kind of. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So marks going like this. They just yeah exactly. So it dries, <coughs> and built in within this pod is a tension so that when it dries it starts twisting it wants to twist but it can't so on, on, on whatever summer's day it reaches a point where suddenly it cracks along the fault lines uh, like, like it's as if it's been scored ready <coughs> and, it, and as it cracks it twists and it flings the little seeds around probably won't know this one Popping what? Sir? It's a poppy. Poppy? No. I think it's. Um, don't think you see it in this country. It's basically like a cucumber. Uh, inside. In more and more water, moisture, stretches and stretches, <coughs> until what? Till one day, something opens up here and it just fires all its seeds out into the air several meters into the air so propulsion what, what was that? Yeah. I did used to know but I've, I've forgotten it's uh, some, something cucumber yeah. yeah we can have a competition to name it afterwards <coughs> about this one yeah um, and incidentally a lot of design that we find of products in the market are based on what people, what scientists or engineers see in creation so a close up you can see these hooks and I think velcro is, is, is based on this and that's under a microscope and you see how all these things are not just a little bit different they're completely different ways of solving the same problem this is a poppy right stem dries and becomes springy the lid breaks and rolls back as you can see there and the seeds harden and become detached so they're loose inside so if you take get, if you see a poppy and shake it you can hear them but it can't come the seeds can't come out because it's a bowl shape so it's you know it's the that's the stem down here but it's obviously upright until a very windy day or something brushes past the stem bends over and there's the, the, the stress induced the violent movement and it springs back and throws the seed 
so a catapult. Now that one, horse yeah, conquer horse chestnut. <clears throat> now, did you know that the stem, wherever it is, somewhere over here, <coughs> shrivels up and breaks just when the fruit's ripe? When it hits the floor, the spikes hold the shell in place, <coughs> which is the green bit. And you can see the fault lines here again. It's like someone's been along and scored it, ready for it to break open. And that only opens on impact, but this bit stays put because of the spikes. <coughs> the white bit is a cushion, absorbs the impact, and propels the hard bit, the conker, out. And the smooth lubricated surface helps it uh, be ejected and the round shape helps it roll. So how many steps have gone into that design and if I was designing it I think I'd be hard pushed to come up with something as wonderful as that. Okay we'll press on <coughs> I'm going to hammer this home this fruit treats digestion, distribution, flinging, shaking, through the wind, animal movement, there's dropping and rolling, there's floating, there's flying, gliding, helicopter seeds, parachute seeds, there's animal carriers by sticking to the fur, <coughs> velcro hooks, spikes, there's animals that take the nuts and things and bury them, There's explosion, pressure jet, catapult, trampoline. <coughs> All solutions work. There's no convergence, no merging, no natural, natural selection. <coughs> the entire design brief is fulfilled. is our observation without exception in the natural world. So, God demonstrates his glory. And really it comes down to do we want to give God the glory for what he has designed and created or do we want to give that glory to chance? Do we want to be honest with ourselves and take what we see in the world around us and be consistent with it give God the glory or do we not for he spoke and it was done it was created so there's some further resources there of other places where you can look for some of the things I've covered uh, but most of all our own explanation of nature where we live will yield us the answers thank you <coughs>